Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming and turning Amen. out to hear the man of God. Amen. Please have a seat. You know, we are very well aware that within the church, whenever a doctor is going to come talk to you about your food, that's a real challenge. Because we can't smoke, we can't drink, and we shouldn't run around. But by golly, we're going to eat. <laughs> and we do that real well. And the last thing we want is some doctor coming and taking our, <laughs> our comforter away from us. But you're going to learn today that you can still do that. You can still eat and enjoy it. And it will cause life to come back into your body. Now, you may be of the mindset of thinking, God doesn't really care about what I eat, but let me just show you something. You need to see this. It's in Isaiah chapter, if you've got your Bibles, turn to it, Isaiah 7, chapter 14. I want you to see this with your own eyes. This is critical. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Who are we talking about? Right? Jesus. The second verse says, Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse evil and choose good. There it is right there. And what Jesus chose to eat and what he chose to refuse to eat. It caused him to grow in wisdom. Do you want to grow in wisdom? Yes. Say, do you want to get smarter and smarter? Yes. Do you want your kids to grow smarter and smarter? Yes. Do you want your kids to be the wisest in their classroom? Yes. This is the foundation for that principle. God has anointed this man to bring you the truth. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, you're about to hear, about to hear. some things you have never heard before. Never heard before. I'm, about to hear. I'm about to hear some things I've never heard before. Heard before. But I will leave here changed, leave here changed. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have three books in the lobby uh, I don't know how long they're going to last, We have because yesterday you guys ate them up. Praise God, and you received it. And I'm going to tell you something. Knowledge is important. Getting the right knowledge is important. Scripture says, my people are destroyed for lack of So we bring you, there's no way this man can give you everything that's in this book with the amount of time he has, and I'm eating some of it right now. So we do have the books out there, the Keto Zone, um, and Hormones, we'll be talking about that somewhat, and then uh, we have a few cookbooks, the uh, Keto Zone cookbook. We have our two staff members with us, Rosie and Sharon, y'all want to stand up and wave? So if y'all have any questions, they'll be at the table, they'll be happy to answer your questions. God bless you, and now the man of God. Praise God. Okay, church, today I'm going to be talking about who are God's mighty men and women. I'm going to ask you a question. Who are you? Let me hear you say, here I am. Praise God. We're going to raise up God's mighty men and women. Let me tell you, church, we look at Hebrews chapter 11, and you see the heroes of faith. And Moses was one of those great heroes of faith, and if you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 34 and 7 read when Moses was 120 years old when he died his eyes were not dim it says in the New Living Translation his eyesight was clear in other words no cataract no macular degeneration no glaucoma nor his natural vigor diminished and New Living Translation sheds a little more light it says and he was as strong as ever at 120, he was as strong as a young man. Now listen to me, church. In fact, he, at 120 years of age, climbed Mount Nebo, 2,231 feet high, without crutches, without a walker. He climbed it, and he saw all the promised land. God showed him the promised land. He never entered in, but he saw the entire promised land. 
In other words, Moses wasn't frail. He wasn't feeble. He wasn't bent over, shuffling around, not able to do what God called him to do, but he was strong. He was, his mind was sharp. His eyesight was keen. He wasn't full of arthritis or osteoporosis, but he was full of vigor and strength and courage, and that's what God wants you to be in the last days. How many people realize we're living in the last days? Amen. How many people want to be the strong man and woman of God and fulfill the assignment God has given you? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to show you how. Okay, but let's first look at King David. He was another great hero of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But no one ever talks about the David's mighty men. Has anyone heard of David's mighty men? Well, praise God, there's a few of you, but if you read 1 Chron Chronicles chapter 11, verses 10 through 47, David had 47 mighty men. He had three mighty men, very mighty. I call them the mightiest men, and he had three. It's kind of like first team in your NBA basketball team. Well, the first team were the mightiest men. Then he had three others that were real mighty men, then he had 47 just mighty men. Now listen to these mighty men. These are amazing what the feats these men did. This was an elite force of fearless warriors, much more powerful than any other warriors probably ever known, much more powerful than our Navy SEALs and our Green Beret. They were extraordinarily strong, extraordinarily, extraordinarily courageous and brave and completely committed to King David, completely. They were over 50 of the most fierce and dedicated warriors that ever lived. Now, you've heard in Lord of the Rings, uh, Legloss was the son of the elf king in Lord of the Rings. He killed 42 orcs in one battle. Well, that's nothing compared to Abishai, one of David's mighty men. He wasn't even among the mightiest. He killed 300 men in battle, and he was not even one of the three mightiest, and never, it says, never attained the deeds of the three other mightiest warriors. Then there was Benaiah. He was a mighty warrior, but he still wasn't as great as the greatest mighty three. Listen to what this man did. He struck down two lion-like heroes of Moab. Can you imagine a lion-like hero? They were so afraid, covered with hair like a lion's mane, big, strong, fast, but he slew both of them. They were their heroes of Moab. He went down and killed a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. So can you imagine just fighting a lion, but then fighting a lion in a pit where you're slipping and sliding all around the place? Well, what does this sound like, King David? What did King David do in 1 Samuel 17? He killed a lion and killed a bear. But here's Benaiah. He heard the story of David, and so he said, wow, the faith in him was enabled him to do what his, his King David did, and he killed a lion too but not just killing a lion in a pit, in a little pit, and with snow where you don't get a grip. Can you imagine? that? He even outdid David. That's amazing. But also listen to what he did. He struck down an Egyptian, a man of great statue. I call him like a mini Goliath. He was five cubits tall, which is seven feet five inches. And he says, the Egyptian had a spear in his hand like a weaver's beam. Now, a weaver's beam was two and a half inches thick, so you could barely get your hands around it. But what Benaiah did, he went down to that big, tall Egyptian, he, and he had just a staff. He snatched that spear out of his hand and killed him with his own spear. These are these mighty men, but he wasn't among the mightiest. Listen to the mightiest. The mightiest man, or the... Uh, the leader of the three mightiest warriors was Jashobim. Has anyone heard of Jashobim? Listen to what Jashobim did. He was the leader of the three. He once used a spear to kill 300 men in a single battle. 300. Can you imagine? But listen to the other. The second in right rank was Eleazar. He was with David when the Philistines gathered in battle at Pash Damon, and they attacked the Israelites in a field full of barley. David and Eleazar stationed themselves in the middle of the field. The Israeli army fled, but only Eleazar and David held their ground in the middle of the field. And they beat back the Philistines. They stood back to back. Can you imagine having an army coming at you? Your whole army flees, and here's one mighty man that stands back to back with David and fights off the Philistine army. 
This is similar to the Battle of Alamo. Do you remember Alamo? When Davy Crockett, Sam Bowie, and all the great men, and we have one of Mary's relatives was in that Battle of the Alamo, but all these men perished. But here David and Eleazar beat back the Philistine army. These stories were amazing. So I, I imagine there were a lot of kids back then called Eleazar, Jashobim, Benaiah, you know, because they're their modern-day heroes. Well, can I tell you something? I, it goes on and on. I don't have time. But I spoke to a group of our Green Beret soldiers last year on PTSD. I went to Eglin Air Force Base and taught them for three hours. And then afterwards, one of the commanders came and said, Hey, Dr. Colbert, do you want to come to our headquarters and tour it? I'd love to give you a tour. I said, Sure. So he says, Now, normally we don't do this to civilians. So Mary and I went to the headquarters of the Green Beret. And what was amazing is how much they honored their fallen church, how much they loved the fallen soldiers. They had big pictures and shadow boxes with their belongings in it, with their boots, or with, well, of course, their pictures. And they had it lining the halls, lining the stairways. Everywhere you saw, you saw how they remembered these soldiers. But then he took us into his office. And he said, I got to show you this. He says, now this is the flag of ISIS. He says, back a few years ago, we were in Afghanistan, and we were in a valley fighting ISIS for two weeks. And it was an intense battle. And finally, after two weeks, we beat them, and we won. We captured their flag. Now, here's one of the flags we captured. He held it up. And in the middle, I saw it spray painted. He said, you see how it's spray painted over Allah? Because they will, the Afghani government will not let us take a flag that has Allah in it. So they spray paint over it. But he says, I want to show you this. So he took me in his office, and he showed me. He said, now, this is another flag we captured of ISIS. And it showed the flag with Allah's name in the middle of it. He says, we didn't give this to the Afghani government. We got this one, <laughs> okay? So he was proud that he, here were these mighty men, and these men were powerful. It was amazing. I, I, put, I took a few cases of my books. I was just giving them out to them, and I was signing them for the men. But so many of these men looked like modern-day Captain Americas. I mean, they, they were big, they were strong. You should have seen their obstacle course. They, they have to jump out of a plane at 2,000 feet. These guys looked just like modern-day uh, Captain America's church. They were mighty warriors. I'm so proud of our mighty warriors. But the thing that impressed me so much, these weren't even Christians, but the love they had for their brothers, church. We went out to eat with them at night, these commanders and all, and some of them were about to be deployed to Afghanistan and around the world. And they said, now, you've got my, um, you know, my wife and children. And they said, oh, yeah, you know, if your wife needs anything, and they do this all the time, we'll pick them up from school. We'll mow the grass. Church, the love they have for their brothers. I said, where is this in the church? We got to, again, we got to get linked in, and we got to love, and we got to show love to our brothers in Christ. Praise God, church, but it just really rekindled that in me. That yes, we've got to walk in love. That's the main commandment we have is to walk in love. Now, church, to become God's mighty men, real simple, real simple. Spiritual keys we've got to do. One must first be born again. That's your entry. Got to be born again. Number two, you've got to be filled with the Spirit and, listen to me, refill with the Holy Spirit daily. You, what, you say, what do you mean refill? Well, most, most Christians are like helium balloons. You know, you get a helium balloon, it's flying high, but then the next day it's barely floating on the floor, <laughs> okay? So we need to refill it with the presence of God so we walk in the presence of God so that we don't, like, we don't look like we've been baptized in pickle juice, like my friend John Hagee said. <laughs> if you've got a scowl on your face and you're angry and you're ticked off and you're mad and you're offended and someone cuts you off in traffic and all of a sudden you burst out of... A line of obscenities, let me tell you, you're not walking in the Spirit, church. we got to start walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, and getting filled every day, not once a week, every day. Don't be a helium balloon Christian, okay? Now, also what we have to do is we have to walk in the Spirit free of offense. Do not get offended. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in mercy. When people offend you, smile at them and say, praise God, I refuse to be offended. I forgive you. I love you. So just keep walking in the spirit free of offense. This is critical to be a mighty man and woman of God, church. 
You get, this is getting you out of kindergarten. We're trying to get, graduate you from kindergarten. Okay, now, kindergarten in the spirit is what I'm saying, church. Okay, now also walk in the spirit of love. Well, you know what love is, 1 Corinthians 13? Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not exalt itself, it's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not easily provoked, is not offended. Don't keep a record book of wrongs. People are keeping a record book like the Yellow Pages of Atlanta, which she did me wrong. I got it right here. Look what she did to me. She offended. Let it go. Let it go. Jesus forgave you. Forgive them. Let it go, church. It's only going to hurt you, and you will not be a mighty woman or man of God if you're offended. Okay, so what else do I need to do? Well, you got to walk by faith. What's faith? Again, church, realize faith is calling those things that be not as though they are. Yes, I believe, but you got to start speaking out your future. You got to start speaking out the good things, not the bad things. You can't just think it, you got to speak it. And God honors His word, but back it up with Scripture. You got to walk by faith and you got to walk in joy. Say joy. joy. You got to have the joy of the Lord. You know, the joy of the Lord is the greatest thing that unbelievers see. When you have joy, they think, wow, what kind of drug are you on? What are you taking? Is that ecstasy? Is that cocaine? Is that crack? What is that? And that's your time to witness. They say, I want what you have. Like you see Rosie. Rosie here walks in joy like very few people I've ever seen in my life. This lady, literally, she lives the joy walk, and everyone wants to know, what are you taking, Rosie? And Rosie's always witnessing, leading people to the Lord. is precious, but they see that supernatural joy that's in her. And then finally... Find your purpose, your assignment, church. God's given every one of you an assignment and fulfill it. Those are our spiritual keys. It's real simple, real simple. That's, that's it. That's getting you out of kindergarten, and boom, you're on your way to being a mighty man and woman. Now, there's natural keys. you got to learn to crucify your flesh. When your flesh craves sugar, that's not God. That's your flesh, okay? <laughs> When your flesh is craving a, a whole lot of popcorn, oh, you smell that popcorn? Oh, that buttery popcorn smells so good. Put some extra butter on it, please. Just coat it. Just coat the whole thing. Sit down and eat the whole big bucket. No, that's your flesh. That's not the Spirit of God. you got to crucify your flesh and say no. You also have got to become disease-resistant by following the key health principles. I outlined, I, I talked, what, 10 years ago, Pastor, on the seven pillars of health. Those seven pillars are still extremely important. But another pillar I've kind of added, slipped in there, low-carb lifestyle. I've taken the living food to a new level, and we implement the low-carb lifestyle, or even better is paleo, and even better is keto. And, I'll, and again, paleo, when you eat the low-carb lifestyle, realize about 45 to 65% of our calorie intake are carbs, starches, and sugars. That, that's, that's normal, normal American diet. But when you go low carb, we try and bring those carbs down to less than 20%, less than 30. So you gotta make it up with increasing two key foods, either healthy fats or proteins. If you lower your carbs, increase your proteins, that's more paleo. If you lower your carbs and increase your fats, that's more keto. So I don't care which one you do, just so you're going in the right direction. And again, I explained this in my book and also in the talk I did yesterday. So if you didn't hear it, please get that talk. But also what we have to do, church, we have to also optimize our hormones as we age to the hormones of a young man and young woman. And when we do that, we literally start to have the strength and the energy, especially over age 50, to fulfill the calling and the assignment God has given us. Do you understand me, church? Now, I'm not saying synthetic hormones. I'm saying bioidentical hormones that your body makes. Now, you say, well, I don't understand this. Well, let me take women, for example. I tell couples, don't get divorced until you get your hormones optimized. <laughs> that of a young woman, that of a young man when you're older. Now, listen to what happens to you women. Women at about age 40... Your testosterone level, now you say, women have testosterone? Absolutely, that's what gives them libido. And that's how we procreate, that's how we're able to have children because the libido is really strong and it's really high when young women are teenagers and 20s and 30s, but something happens at age 40. 
that testosterone level that was here goes down to here and all of a sudden that woman wakes up one day and she has no libido and she looks at her husband and her husband has that little twinkle in his eye and, and so all of a sudden she's uh uh don't don't go there don't even go there and a husband comes in calls pastor says something's the matter the woman that you married me 20 years ago and this is not the same woman she has no libido and she had nothing. She don't want anything to do with me. She, she'll cook and she'll clean. But that other part of being a wife, she, she's checked out. Checked out. What's happened, Pastor? She needs to be delivered. Can you get someone over here? Get, get the delivery ministry over here and cast this demon out of her. <laughs> okay. Now, Pastor says, well, did, did, you get, did you see your doctor? Yeah, I saw my doctor. Yeah, hormones are all normal. Well, did you see the right doctor? Well, what do you mean the right doctor? Well, did you see a bioidentical hormone doctor, an anti-aging doctor, an age management doctor? It's in the back of my book again. Well, no. Well, let's go see one. Well, they take him to the doctor, and then he explains to the patients, to the man and the woman, at age 40, your testosterone level was here. Now he shows them. He checks the blood. It's way down here. It's like less than 15 or less than 10, some two. And when it's that low, no libido. Now, what I do is I put my women on some testosterone cream or a pellet. Now, a pellet supercharges my women. And when I put a, a pellet in them, a testosterone, all of a sudden, when three or four months is over, the husband's calling, oh, my wife needs to come in and see you right away. Get, can we get her in tomorrow? I said, what do you mean tomorrow? Well, she's been like a young woman for the last three to four months, and all of a sudden, she's going back to the way she used to, she was, and I want her back in there. Now, again, I'll say, we'll get her in here right away, and we'll fix her up, because now, again, what I have to do, men's hormone levels start to go down about age 50. So here's these men are at age 40, and all of a sudden, the woman's checked out, and then he's... And so I've got to, again, get them hormonally optimized and balanced. Again, a lot of marriages are not hormonally balanced. And so we ba when we balance them and get the women's hormones optimized and the men's optimized, then all of a sudden we have wonderful relationships. And the next hormone that falls in women around age 45 is progesterone. And when women's progesterone falls, guess what happens? She gets irritable. The husband gets home from work. What you doing home so early? Can't you get back to work? <laughs> or she wakes up irritable. No longer does she greet him with a smile, but she's just angry. That mouth turned down. He's just angry and yeah, 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 yeah. You know that church? And just irritated at him and never smiling. But here at work, the husband can't wait to get back to work <laughs> because he's got his secretary or he's got some young woman there that's smiling at him and and just so happy to see him and oh can I get you some coffee oh can I get you some tea oh can I do this for you so again women let me tell you you got to wake up you got to start smiling to your husband when you smile these powerful hormones are released in your husband oxytocin the vasopressin that bond you to your wife you don't want him being bound to another woman that's smiling do you well don't be greeting him with a snarl what you doing home so late? Did you bring home the bacon? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you got you to gotta sweeten up. We got to get a sweetener. In order to sweeten you up, a lot of women just have low progesterone. But you go to your doctor, he doesn't check your progesterone. And if he does, he puts you on the wrong one. Provera, that makes you meaner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and then it can increase your risk of breast cancer. So again, you need to see a doctor that knows bioidentical hormones. It's in the back of my hormone book or else you're going to be worse. You can take it in cream form. Now, you can get the cream at health food stores. Save your money. Go to the health food store, get some progesterone cream. They don't, serve that, they don't sell that uh, synthetic stuff. Now, the last hormone women that goes is usually around age 50, estrogen. Estrogen tanks. Then all of a sudden, hot flash city. Hot flashes, night sweats. You, all of a sudden, middle of the night, you're tossing those covers off. Your husband said, what, the, what has happened to my wife? You're turning that AC down to about 65 or 60, and all of a sudden, your husband's freezing. And then all of a sudden, you get that vaginal dryness and that itch. And my goodness, that itch, you cannot control the itch. You're scratching, and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, I can't scratch there. People are going to look at me. <laughs> And then you have the spanks on, and man, it's hard to scratch that itch. 
and then you're in trouble. You're sitting squirming in church. What's the matter, dear? Oh, I got, I got an itch. <laughs> okay. So praise God. You women need some natural estrogen. Now, again, I do a whole talk on this church called Don't Get Divorced Till You Get Your Hormones Optimized. And I bring Rosie up there. I keep her hormones optimized. I got her on keto. And she's, oh, my goodness. She's the, one of the happiest married. Come on up here, Rosie. You got to tell them. Come here. Just, just, uh, you got one minute, Rosie. So tell them how happily married you are. She's a happily married woman. Is it on? on? Hello, hello. There. Praise God. There you go. Tell them how happily married. Oh, well, I am. I have an awesome husband that God sent me miraculously, and we have a lot of fun. <laughs> Tell them what I do with your hormones. <laughs> yeah, he keeps them balanced, the hormones, and with progesterone and hormones, because I'm do I use, do I, How about testosterone? <laughs> and te but I feel like I'm just 19. There you go. <laughs> I do. Now, what happens when they run out? I feel a little down and like, uh-oh, time for a new pellet. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. That's enough, Rosie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God, church. We have fun. We have fun. Now, let's talk about you men. Okay, are you ready, men? Now, men, let me tell you some bad news. I got some bad news. I'm sorry, but I got some bad news first. I'm going to give you the bad, then I'm going to give you the good. How's that? How much time we got? 15 minutes. Praise God. Okay. Testosterone levels in men are plummeting. And even worse news, estrogen levels in men are rising. Uh-oh. That ain't good, men. <laughs> okay. I just had a man last week in my office. His total testosterone level was 200. Well, that's not even considered low anymore, church. But in my case, and if I see it that low, I say, whoa, you're in the your testosterone in a tank. But guess what? His estradiol, the most powerful estrogen hormone in the body, was 264. Here he was, 55-year-old, severe ED, no sex drive, no energy, couch potato. He'd sit on the couch after dinner, fall asleep, had no energy, no get-up-and-go at all. His get-up-and-go had gone. And here's his wife, checked her hormone level. Her estradiol, she was 55, was less than 5. Now, his was 264. Hers was less than 5. How compatible do you think that couple is? I, you could do all the casting in and casting out. <laughs> you could do all, all the marriage counseling until you're blue in the face. But until you bring those hormones up at least into the low normal and bring that estrogen down, you're going to have problems in the marriage, church. You see it? Well, again, what did I do? I brought that estrogen down. What did I use? I used methane. Oh, that's a mouthful. methane. what? I just call it DIM, D-I-M. It's a supplement that naturally brings the estrogen down. I encourage every man to take it because most of you will have a little high estrogen level. And it brings the estrogen down beautifully. It's all natural. It comes from broccoli. And then I put him on testosterone. Now, now I use the bioidentical testosterone in men. We can do pellets or shots. You can do a shot. I like to give my men shots twice a week. But well, I got, what about prostate cancer? You say, I'm afraid I'm going to get prostate cancer. Well, let me tell you what the facts. And this is Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler, leading, leading urologist from Harvard, says that testosterone helps prevent prostate cancer. Men with low testosterone levels are more likely to develop prostate cancer. Now, if you have prostate cancer, you don't want testosterone. So again, but if you do have low testosterone, let's bring it up. Now, low, let me explain to you low. Now, I, just this last week, I, I couldn't believe it because I look at labs every day, and I saw the lowest yet. Now, one lab just said the low testosterone in their range was 175. Now, normal used to be one, uh, 1,200 was the high normal, and then 350 was the low. But then, a year or so ago, it dropped down to 250 or 260, and now it's just dropped down in this one lab to 175. A man, man, if your testosterone 175, you're going to feel horrible. You're going to feel like an 80 or 90-year-old, especially if you're 30. You're in trouble. 
So again, if you're having low energy, and I'm going to talk to you about the signs in just a minute, but again, what we want to do is bring these hormones up with either cream. Now, I can get it up with cream now, but even better is shots and even better are pellets. But again, we can do whatever. It's kind of like a car. Do you want a Volkswagen? Or do you want a Cadillac? Or you want a Mercedes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> again, so the cream's cheap. Everyone can afford the cream. But again, what I'm saying is let's get those hormones up to the level you need them and let's protect them, let's lower that estrogen. Because listen, here's what happens as we age, men. Our test, this little enzyme called aromatase increases its activity. Now, aromatase converts testosterone to estrogen. So if you go to your doctor and you get testosterone, guess what's going to happen? He, he doesn't check your estradiol level. Your estrogens go, go up. And just like I had a man who was a big, huge mountain of a man, police officer, about 6'6", six, six, weighed about 275 pounds, solid muscle. He came in my office and with his wife, and his wife said, do something with him. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, this is not the man I married. He's wanting to watch the We Channel, the Lifestyle Channel, <laughs> women's TV, and I see him over there just a crying, just a weeping. And she says, this man, he doesn't have an erection anymore. We used to have intercourse every single night. He doesn't want any. And yet he's on testosterone shots. His level is like 1,200. And look at him. I checked his estradiol. Guess what it was, church? 350. I said, ma'am, we got to check your, t your testosterone and your estrogen. And what happened is his estrogen was like three times higher than hers. And as a result, he was developing man boobs. You know what man boobs are? I said, man, we get any more, and we're going to have to put you in a bra, or at least some Spanx, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so, so again, I had to lower his estradiol level. I had to tweak his testosterone, bring that down, and all of a sudden, you see, let me explain something to you, man. If your estrogen's high, ED, you're, you're inviting ED in. Here's OED, erectile dysfunction comes in. You don't know. And so here, once we lower that estrogen, keep that testosterone high normal, all of a sudden, erectile dysfunction usually goes away. So again, we gotta check these hormones and balance them, bring them in balance, bring them in optimization. Now, let's, here's what's happening. Testosterone levels are plummeting. T men today have 20% less testosterone than men just 20 years ago, 20% less. Men's sperm count has dropped 50% less than 40 years. Why, why? Endocrine disruptors, chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. Chemicals are, most of the chemicals we're exposed to affect our thyroid, and our hormones, and many of them are, are simply estrogenic hormone disruptors that increase estrogen levels, church. That's why we're seeing so much prostate cancer, so much breast cancer. Let's just give you a few examples. One endocrine disruptor is bisphenol A. Has anyone heard of BPA or bisphenol A? Let me, and I talk about this in my book, The Hormone Zone, so I, I'm just going to go over a couple. It's found in the lining of canned foods. How many people eat canned food? In the lining of most canned foods is this estrogenic substance, men, that when you eat canned foods, your bisphenol A increases and your estrogen increases. And you're inviting in, come on in, ED, come on. Come on in, uh, feminization features. Come on in, man boobs. Come on in, infertility. You don't want that, men. So throw out, no, I'm not saying throw out, give away the cans. Give them to the Goodwill or whoever will take them. Start eating either fresh veggies or frozen or something. But get rid of the cans because it's got bisphenol A. What else has bisphenol A in it? Aluminum beverage can, soda can. Why? Okay, that's why I drink water. But water you got to be careful with too. Another big thing is credit card receipts. You know when you get a credit card receipt, it has bisphenol A on it. And if your hands and fingers are moist or wet or oily, you absorb bisphenol A through your skin. It's an estrogen. So what I do, oh, don't give me a credit card receipt. I'm fine. Or if I do, here, hand me that credit card receipt. <laughs> Put it right there. They say, what do, you, what do you mean? What's the matter with this thing? I said, I don't want the bisphenol A. What? And I said, don't, don't worry. Just, <laughs> you know, I don't have to explain it to them. But that's because it's an estrogenic substance. Well, you say, well, and again, I go in detail, a lot more detail. Another common one is atrazine. This is a chemical is a chemical contaminant in the U.S. water supply that's a weed killer second to Roundup. You've heard on TV all the Roundup. Listen to atrazine. 
Atrazine is real common. It's the most common chemical contaminant in the U.S. water supply, a major reason why not to drink tap water unless it's filtered. Do you hear me, church? Now listen to what this does. It's been found to turn male frogs into female frogs. And again, this is close to home because I live in Orlando. They did a lot of this research on Lake Apopka, which is right a few miles away from our house. It has been found to turn um, a gender-bending impact on fish, alligators, and turtles. It makes them feminine. It also has been found to have an increased risk of decreased male fertility, increased risk of breast and prostate cancer. So another good reason why not to drink tap water, make sure you filter your water. Now, luckily, most restaurants use filtered water. If you go to restaurants, make sure the water's filtered is all, if you have water, okay? If not, bottled water, please, all right? You say, oh, what about the plastic? Well, as long as you don't heat the plastic, if you heat the plastic, you release plasticizers or phthalates. That's another estrogen. So again, we gotta be careful with this, church. Pesticides are sprayed on most all produce except for organic, and most pesticides are estrogen, estrogenic, estrogens, they're environmental estrogens. So again, another reason why those, we have the dirty dozen. When you eat a lot of strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, church, again, they soak up pesticides. Please get organic, that's it, okay? And again, I'll go into more detail. Okay, so let's talk about testosterone. Back in the 1940s, we got a, whole, a friend of mine got a hold of some of the lab manuals. And you know back then, high normal testosterone level was 2,500. But now they keep lowering the range. So that now, many of the ranges are about you know 750 to about um, 250. And now even I said now to 175. Or 720. 720 is now considered high. Anything over 720. So again, look at how they've lowered it almost 500 points in just a few years. So now when you go to your doctor and they check your testosterone, you know, first they, they don't check your total and free because your free is your actual usable testosterone. So it needs to be both. And that's why I go in detail in this in my book. But again, when they check it, they'll say, oh, yours is 400. You are right in the middle, right where you should be. If you want to feel horrible, that's right where you should be, okay? <laughs> or yours is 350, or yours is 251. Well, wait a second, I'm 30 years old. Well, 251 is what a 70, 80-year-old will feel like. You want to feel like a 70, 80-year-old? Or do you want to be a mighty man of God? Amen. A mighty man. We got to get that up and keep that estrogen down. You see what I'm saying, church? So I'm saying... You need to see a doctor who knows about these hormones. That's why I go to the back of the book and find someone that's board certified and anti-aging or age management that can do this properly or you're going to be messed up more than ever. Okay? So let's look at the benefits of testosterone. For, okay, this is so men and women. Now, testosterone, I put most of my women over 40 or 50 on testosterone, but usually the cream. We don't need to jack it up to where you're, you know, strong as a man. I don't want you to grow hair on your chest or a beard like Rosie. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing, Rosie. I love to pick on Rosie here. Okay, now, here's what testosterone does. It prevents frailty and feebleness. It's the best nursing home insurance to keep you out of a nursing home. How many people want to go to a nursing home when you're 70 or 80? Just look forward to it. Just put me in the nursing home. Park me there, and I'm done. Give me a little wheelchair. Give me three meals and a bed, and I'm fine. You want that, church? I have seen so many men and women, 75, 80. I'm going to tell you about Agnes later on. But what happens is once they get to be about 80, their family, oh, they're riddled with arthritis and osteoporosis. They fractured a hip. Let's just put them in the nursing home. Or they're starting to get early dementia. Let's just put them in a nursing home, not bother with it. You don't want to go there. This is best nursing home insurance, and i got to hurry. So here's what happens. Testosterone improves overall strength and stamina. It strengthens the heart. Just this past week, I had a patient come in that had severe congestive heart failure six months prior. He came in, he had ejection fraction of 10%. His uh, cardiologist, who was an invasive cardiologist, he was a, uh, this man, he said, needed a heart transplant. So he took the doctor's medicine, the ejection fraction went from 10% to 20%. The doctor was elated. Okay, you got a few months before you need a heart transplant. Let's just try and keep you alive, so just don't miss your medicine. He came to see me. What did I put him on? Check this testosterone. No testosterone, like 100. Put him on testosterone cream. 
got him up to around 700, feeling really good, put him on some supplement, put him on the keto, and all of a sudden we saw him last week, last week, Sharon was, can uh, bear witness to this, came literally, he was dragging in with a walker all swollen the first time I saw him, could barely walk, just swollen up with severe edema, came literally in with a spring in his step. Didn't look, I didn't recognize him, church. I said, what on earth has happened? He said, just went to my cardiologist, he fired me. He says, your ejection fraction is up to 48%. Nor, it's almost normal. I took you off the transplant list. Don't need a transplant. And, and he said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And the guy wanted to tell him, he said, don't want to hear it. Just keep doing whatever you're doing. And just, you need to see a regular cardiologist. Don't need to see me. Well, he was elated. And I said, well, what else you been doing? They said, I'd never cut my grass again. I've been cutting my grass, my yard every day. Would you, I said, just do it early morning in the cooler morning. He said, I'm not doing the cooler morning. I do it at noon. He says, I'm sweating out there. I just drink water. If I get a little tired, I sit down. And he says, I've got as much energy as I had when I was a young man. That's what testosterone does, church. It strengthens your heart. Again, cardiologists are now figuring this out, and I've got to hustle. Okay, hurry, let's hurry. Here's what it does. Testosterone helps protect men and women against Alzheimer's disease. It protects the brain. It protects men against prostate cancer. Women, it protects you against breast cancer. It treats the best antidepressant there is. It increases norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, makes you feel, as Rosie says, good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it also helps husbands and wives maintain healthy libido, which the church needs. It boosts energy for men and women. It improves the grumpies. We call low testosterone grumpy old man syndrome, but also grumpy old woman syndrome. Get rid of the grumpies. It decreases inflammation in the joint. It's amazing how many people have gotten off arthritis medicines with testosterone. One of the best natural anti-inflammatories in the world, church. I get so excited about this. It helps reverse insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes. I've reversed so many type 2 diabetics. What do I do? Put them on exercise, put them on testosterone, put them on keto, get them walking, and all of a sudden they build up their muscle and the sugar drops. The most amazing thing for type 2 diabetes. And fi finally, it burns belly fat. What are the warning signs for testosterone? Real quick, if you have any of these signs and you're 35 to 50 or older, get it checked. Loss of morning erections is the number one sign. If you don't get morning erections, men, your testosterone, total or free, is usually low. Loss of sex drive or decreased sex drive, fatigue, irritable and grumpy, brain fog, poor memory, belly fat. The more belly fat generally, the lower the testosterone. Weight gain, less strength, less stamina, less competitiveness, increased sleepiness after dinner, less enjoyment in life, a cloud of depression over you, and loss of confidence, focus, and indecisive. Now, there's natural ways to increase it, like testophen or standardized fidget Greek. For young men that want to have children, I put them in Clomid or HCG. For men over 50 that are done with babies, having children, I put them on testosterone. Now, story of Agnes. Let me tell you about Agnes real quick. Don't have time to get into uh, thyroid. Agnes was 80 years old when I saw her. She was obese. She weighed 250, and she was only 5'5". Five five. Agnes's husband had died 10 years earlier, and she got so depressed that all she did was eat. Sugar and garbage is what she lived on. She put on almost, you know, 75 to 100 pounds, and as a result, she, she overwhelmed. She put, put so much weight on, it's too much weight for her joints, and she started wearing down her joints. She developed bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in her knees and her hips, and she had osteoporosis where they said one fall, you could fracture your hip. Her children got together and said, Mom, we're going to put you in a nursing home. You're 80 years old. One fall, you could, you could fracture your hip. We've got to put you in a nursing home. She came to me. said, Dr. Cobra, I don't want to go in a nursing home. Help me. So I said, okay, Agnes, let's get a plan. Let's check it. Checked her hormones. Testosterone was less than two. Two. Two, church, as my grandbaby says. <laughs> okay? I put her on testosterone pellets like I do Rosie because she needed a big tow truck. Saw her every three months, put another pellet in. And then also put on a little natural thyroid to boost her metabolic rate. I also put her on the keto zone diet. And I started her on recumbent bike. So it's real joint friendly. Walking was too, she couldn't walk. She was walk, using a walker. So I put her on a recumbent bike. I said, just do it five minutes a day, five days a week. She gradually increased to 10 minutes. Gradually, after a few months, she increased to 
30 minutes, five days a week. Put on intermittent fasting and say, listen, you don't need breakfast. Let's speed this whole process up. I said, skip breakfast, drink my keto coffee in the morning with a little fiber. Have fiber, you know, not together. Have a little cup of fiber and then have your keto coffee. She did it. She skipped breakfast, ate lunch and, and late dinner, keto style. The weight started coming off. And then one day, she and also depression left, energy came forth, and so she kept increasing her time, church, increasing her time. Put her on a few little supplements to help her with inflammation, just a few, not many. Put her on some glucosamine chondroitin. And then about four months later, the phone rings, and here's Agnes on the phone crying. And they're saying, are you okay, Miss Agnes? You okay? She says, no, you don't understand. She says, this is the first time I've been without pain in years, church. The first time in years. And so what happened? She continued the program. She lost in a year and a half 75 pounds. She was a different person. She started working out at a gym. And then she came in one day. See, she had come in with her son who wanted to put her in a nursing home. And this time she came in, I thought it was her brother, big, big tall, uh, you know, real distinguished, stood real straight and strong. I said, my goodness, this nice, distinguished, good-looking guy. And I said, well, this must be your brother. She said, no, big smile on her face like Rosie. <laughs> this is my fiancé. Well, wait a sec, you're 81. <laughs> she said, oh, my son's not happy about this. <laughs> but, oh, we're getting married here in the next few months. And she said, she winked at me, said, Dr. Colbert, keep those pellets coming because I can't wait for my honeymoon. <laughs> Praise God, church. And I said, my goodness, you're like my Rosie. <laughs> okay. So praise God, church. Let's all stand up. And let's receive this. Psalms 103, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who heals all your, who forgives all your sins, and who heals all your diseases. But listen to this, church. The Amplified says, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. Now, with every head bowed, confess, my youth is renewed like the eagles. I refuse to be feeble and frail. But I'll get my testosterone levels checked. By a doctor who understands hormones. I'll exercise my body on a regular basis. I commit to following a low carb lifestyle. I crucify my flesh daily and give my body what I need and not what my flesh craves. Now, finally, Philippians 4 9. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, church. Did you receive it today, church? Amen and amen. Wow, I just wish we could give him more time. Were you I all blessed? I got halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> okay, praise God. Amen. I had to land that plane. <laughs> <laughs>